Well, uh, once again, welcome everyone to today's webinar titled Food and Agricultural Defense Initiative Extension Disaster Education Network. Uh, we're going to be talking about project updates and transition. Uh, my name is Philip Stokes. I'm from the UFIFA Center for Public Issues Education and Agriculture and Natural Resources, or PI Center. Uh, I work closely with Dr. Angie Lindsay with the Florida, Florida Eden. And I'm just here to um, help things run smoothly. And I'm going to turn it over to our uh, speakers in just a second. But I do want to say for everyone who registered, um, this webinar is being recorded. So you will uh, receive a link to the recording once this is posted. Um, and then also, if you have questions or comments throughout today's webinar, you can use the Q&A feature in Zoom or you can use the chat feature. We'll be monitoring both of those. So feel free to uh, use those as you like. You can do it throughout the webinar or uh, we'll have a little bit of discussion at the end of today's webinar as well. So that's really all I have at this time. I'm gonna uh, turn it over to Tom Ball, uh, the national chair of Eden. So uh, Tom, take it away. Philip, thank you so much for facilitating this uh momentous event in the history of Eden. I uh, would like to welcome everyone to our gathering today. Uh, good afternoon for those of you in the central and eastern time zones and in the western part of the country. Uh, welcome as well for this morning session. Uh, we are gathered here today uh, for a one-of-a-kind event in the history of Eden. We are going through a transition in our collaboration, support uh, our foundational uh, provision from the uh, United States Department of Agriculture's uh, NIFA program, uh, the Extension Foundation on uh, September 1st will be our guiding light and our main uh, resource. And for that, we wanted to take this opportunity to say uh, welcome aboard those of you with the Extension Foundation team. But we also wanted to take time to say thank you uh, to Purdue and for the FATTY team that has been such a bedrock uh, for Eden. Uh, I, I can go back to the origins, uh, 1993, and, and talk about the involvement of Purdue and uh, the gathering of a momentum that led to the creation of Eden. And there are those from Purdue and the Purdue community that are with us today. We want to say thank you to them, but we also want to thank you, uh, spread to those that are in the Purdue community uh, that helped get us to this point. We can't forget anyone in our history that has allowed us to make the progress and to become the uh, nationally identified icon in emergency management and emergency preparedness that we are today. So thank you, and uh, you will be better thanked later, hopefully, but right now I want to say thank you. Let me take this opportunity, if I could, to uh, make uh, known all of those that are uh, going to be speaking uh, today, or at least in positions to answer questions. We have uh, Dr. A.B. Lindsay from the University of Florida IFAS uh, Extension, uh, the uh, National Vice Chair, soon to be Chair of Eden. Uh, we have from Texas A&M University, Dr. Monty Dozier, who is the secretary uh, and is does such a wonderful job in keeping us on the straight and narrow and inside the uh, boundaries of uh, performance, uh, as well as recording our history and achievements. Uh, also today, uh, it is our pleasure to have with us Dr. Ashley Mueller, from the USDA NIFA. She is our program leader uh, in support of our efforts on this Fatty Eden uh, collaboration. Uh, she has been a member of Eden as a well as a uh, oversight and uh, guiding star in our uh, development. Uh, Ashley uh, is a valuable uh, asset for Eden. Uh, some of you may know our 
incoming uh, lead for uh, the Extension Foundation, Dr. Jason uh, Weigel. He has been a pleasure to work with in the brief period that we've had uh, to visit with him since being uh, awarded the uh, uh, grant uh, from NIFA. Uh, he is uh, helping us uh, in numerous ways and he will explain how those uh, helps and how the things that uh, the Extension Foundation can do for us uh, in uh, the coming days and months and uh, years. Uh, also, uh, I've got to introduce uh, someone that, as uh, Jay Leno or, or uh, Mr. Fallon would say, Jimmy Fallon, that uh, needs no introduction, Mike Gaffney, who is a longtime uh, point of contact for Washington State University, but has also held many other uh, positions of importance and value to Eden. Uh, Mike, we are glad to have you with us here today. No stranger to all of you is uh, Amanda Mosman, who is the Purdue uh, Project Lead, who is guiding us through this uh, last year of Purdue involvement, who is uh, working uh, to make the transition uh, smooth and effective and efficient. And uh, you all uh, have uh, had chances to work with her and uh, certainly the executive committee and officers thank her for her uh, many, many contributions over the past months. Uh, the final introduction uh, is someone that uh, probably knows more of you than uh, do I or any of the other executive committee members. Uh, she has been uh, that go-to person at Purdue for so long. And as we understand it, uh, she is opening a new chapter in her life tomorrow and has many opportunities and exciting things in front of her. And we wish her the best, give her our love and thanks for uh, all of the jobs well done that she's done for us. Uh, that is Abby the uh, Lillipop. And we thank you uh, for being with us here today, Abby. Having uh, gone around the bend, uh, I will now pitch to Ashley, and uh, she has a presentation that will guide us through what the uh, Food and Agriculture Defense Initiative uh, is all about and what the uh, relationship is with Eden and uh, our network. Ashley, thank you for being here, and we turn the program over to you. Great. Well, thank you, Tom, and good afternoon or good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Ashley Mueller. I do serve as a national program leader in NIFA's Division of Family and Consumer Sciences and our Institute of Youth, Family, and Community. I am NIFA's liaison to Eden, um, but as Tom shared, I am no stranger to the network, um, having once served as a state point of contact. And so um, Eden is near and dear to my heart and something that I am very familiar with. And I've certainly appreciated the opportunity to transition from my uh, institution to NIFA where I can further be involved in disaster education. My program portfolio here at NIFA does include our disaster and extreme weather programs. And as I shared, I am the liaison uh, to Eden, and it is something that I certainly enjoy. I, in my role, get to engage with Tom, Angie, Monty, and the rest of the executive committee crew monthly through monthly meetings, as well as uh, meetings outside of that and other communication. As we all know, situational awareness is incredibly important in the work we do. And uh, NIFA, uh, through my role, is is glad to be a part of that. So um, I just sincerely appreciate this, that we're doing this here today. Uh, before I moved into my remarks, uh, Tom, you took a lot of the words out of my mouth, so we're certainly in sync there. Um, but, you know, with as as we have reflected probably on the past five or so years, right, maybe the Moline uh, annual conference for those of you who were there when it was announced that NIFA would be competing this funding opportunity for the first time. I mean, a lot has happened since then. And I think, you know, especially cooperative extension, even more so Eden has been responsive to so many things. And, you know, I just, uh, again, am so appreciative of all of the people involved. Um, 
that you're going to be hearing about here uh, from here soon. Um, so publicly wanted to congratulate the new awardee. We're looking forward to, to seeing what comes of that project, um, but certainly wanted to highlight and appreciate and thank the Purdue team for their leadership over the past several years. Um, you know, everybody has played an important role and I, you know, need to specifically call out Abby. I remember my first annual conference um, in Muscle Shoals, Alabama and, and meeting Abby for the first time who was so willing to get me engaged. And before I knew it, I was a part of a committee <laughs> um, on lists, right? And so I think it's a testament that, uh, you know, through her and others that you know, Eden um, not only just talks, uh, but makes things happen. So, so thank you all. All right. So now I will move into my presentation. So next slide, please. So I just wanted to take a real brief moment. I've put in the chat the link to USDA's non-discrimination statement and wanted to share that USDA is an equal opportunity provider, employer, and lender. Next slide. So I'm going to provide a brief background on that Food and Agriculture Defense Initiative funding, what we so commonly refer to as FATI. Um, and you can see there the acronym. I remember the first time I kept hearing FATI as a new Eden uh, point of contact. I was like, what, what is happening? What is, what are we talking about, right? You try to, you know, another alphabet soup example. Um, but FATI does refer to a distinct type of funding that NIFA receives and we distribute that is associated here with biosecurity and networks. And so Eden is in great company through that FATI funding with two other national networks, some of which you may be aware of or you may not. Um, the National Animal Health Laboratory Network, also referred to as NALM, and the National Plant Diagnostic Network, also referred to as NPDN. So you can see here that Eden then makes up, or excuse me, Fatty makes up the three distinct networks, the, the, the people, the animals, and the plants. So both of the other networks also have national program leaders who are assigned to them, and we make up the Fatty team here at NIFA. And I can tell you that we are regularly talking and engaging. We always want to make sure that we're aware of what the other networks are doing so that as we get inquiries in our national program leader roles, that we're able to highlight the good work that is happening through all of these. Um, it's, I think, really important to also highlight that that fatty funding uh, marked its 20th anniversary in uh, 2022. So Tom did share a little bit about the history of Eden and something I wanted to shout out to, to about the Purdue team is they've done a great job in working with committees to um, have that Eden 101 background or primer for all delegates. Well, Eden began right well before that initiation of that fatty funding. And so as NIFA was assessing and looking into uh, what opportunities were there, it was realized, right, let's not duplicate efforts going on. Eden exists and is working well. How can we work in partnership with them to really support, right, the overall goals of the FATI funding? So you can see here that this funding was established, you know, over 20 years ago now. And it has a direct connections to Homeland Security Presidential Directive 9 or HP, HSPD 9. So that was uh, uh, released in 2004. So you may have heard or seen, you know, whether it was in an RFA or uh, have listened to me share before about those biosecurity connections of the FATI funding here. And this is why, because that FATI funding specifically addresses homeland security issues. And, you know, again, it really um, kind of goes back to that overall HSPD-9 and the, the goals there for ensuring strong networks connections um, across, right, the country when it comes to uh, addressing biosecurity. Next slide, please. So uh, just a, a, some brief background. I promise I will not go, go into much detail here, but I think as, as a context setting, it's important to understand the underpinnings of FATI. So um, the, the Public Health Security and Bioterrorism Preparedness and Response Act of 2002, um, I wanted to call out specifically item six here. Because as you maybe will, will, as you read it, and I'm going to read it here in a moment, you'll see here how it directly connects to these characteristics of the network. Developing an agricultural bioterrorism early warning surveillance system through enhancing the capacity of and coordination between state veterinary diagnostic laboratories, 
federal and state agricultural research facilities, and public health agencies. So again, thinking about how the cooperative extension system is organized, right, those local connections, especially right with our, our state agriculture uh, agencies, makes a lot of sense here when we're talking about the history of this funding. Next slide, please. Additionally, another foundational piece of legislation to understand is the National Agricultural Research Extension and Teaching Policy Act of 1977. Again, this, this is, I think, a, really is important to understand in terms of a, of a cooperative extension lens and in terms of how we at NIFA do what we do to support research, education, um, and extension uh, across the land-grant system and the country. And so if we look and dive a little bit deeper into information about that legislation, we're seeing kind of some key words pull out that, again, directly aligns with Eden and biosecurity. So that is reducing the vulnerability of the U.S. food and ag system, continuing partnerships, engaging in partnerships, awarding competitive and cooperative agreements, um, countering bioterrorism. Uh, responding to chemical or biological attacks, and then as well as thinking about tactical science activities as they span across the research, education, and economics mission area domain. For your awareness too, NIFA sits in USDA's research, education, and economics mission area, so it's all kind of connecting here. Next slide. So if you're a visual learner, uh, this is just an example. I, I wanted to share HSPD 9, right, 2004. Here you can see uh, this was essentially laid out the, the groundwork for um, some of that information and, and foundational information about FATI. Uh, there was a, an updated version here that was released last fall called National Security Memorandum 16. And if Abby would advance to the next slide, I'll do a quick side-by-side -side comparison. So you'll see here, not much has changed um, between the two uh, uh, directives, if you will. Um, the first or the, that guiding initial uh, directive noted a nationwide lab network, again, focus here is on network, and promoting a higher education program to address, right, protection of animal, plant, and public health in the food supply. In that most recent version that was released last fall, we're still talking about, right, this coordinated network model, as well as now calling out funding opportunities and tools. And what I think here is so important and connects directly to cooperative extension is training for food and agricultural sector employees, as well as enhancing the preparedness and resilience of the food and ag sector. So you can see here, right, though Eden specifically not called out in these because of this kind of overall arching or uh, overarching infrastructure, um, there's a lot of connection, right, as, you, as you're seeing and looking at the language here and reflecting on what Eden does. And it just makes sense, right, for NEFA to have this specific connection through this fatty funding with the network. Next slide, please. So real quickly, I'm just going to go into some details. Now, this uh, some of this is, is probably not new, because if you read that uh, request for funding, uh, our request for applications that we released here in the spring, I pulled a lot of this out there because it's foundational information. But just to, to reiterate, um, we do use a competitive uh, grant uh, process to solicit applications to this funding opportunity. So uh, Purdue received that award, that competitive award in fiscal year 2018. And then of course, as, as was shown to the Extension Foundation received the, the fiscal year 23 award, which officially starts here tomorrow. Um, as sort of a bridge, as uh, you know, thinking about and reflecting on the, the past few years, it, it made a lot of sense to, to come up with a transition plan. And so NIFA used a directed request for applications in FY22, and that was directed towards Purdue. So there was some continuity there that we ensured. This award is unique because it is a cooperative agreement. Um, so that means that there's arrangement between the awardee and the federal government, um, and that the federal government through my role and program staff's role, that we get to have substantial involvement. Um, so that means that rather than just funding the, the project and saying, okay, please share updates as needed, uh, that allows me and, and my colleagues to be as involved as we need to be, like to be, um, again, situational awareness is everything. And we see ourselves as a partner here in the work and certainly want to be engaged as, um, as appropriate. Next slide, please. 
So um, as, as part of that cooperative agreement, I wanted to just educate on what it is that we NIFA bring to that. Um, because again, this is, is unique in terms of um, uh, awards. So uh, as, as I shared, I am NIFA's liaison to Eden. Um, and so part of it is my background uh, definitely aligns right with disaster education. And that means that then I can assist in monitoring the project and have those important conversations and, and be in communication with the awardee, as well as be in communication with the executive, executive committee and the officers. Of course, we provide the funding then for that award. So um, here you'll see the, you know, we list uh, the, the approximate award amount. As I share, this was pulled directly from the RFA. And then as my role as a national program leader, I get to review and approve those annual project uh, reports as well as the final technical report. And then my team in our awards management division um, reviews financial status reports and we collaborate as well behind the scenes. So that means then, right, communication all along the way, no surprises, making sure things are moving and, and progressing as planned. And then, of course, there is a technical assistance and guidance piece, again, um, with kind of the lens uh, that I am viewing the project and, and what I do within my chair as a national program leader. Uh, there are maybe things that I've learned that can provide assistance to the awardee, and so that uh, allows me to be able to do that. Next slide, please. And this is my last slide. So uh, what is expected of the Fatty Eden awardees? Well, um, very, very much in line with what we expect from a typical competitive grant awardee. You know, progress reports are to be submitted to the agency. A final technical report is also submitted. But something that's unique about Eden, and as I've shared this before, you know, situational awareness is everything. And so we ask the awardee to provide updates on a monthly basis about what's going on with the project um, because that feeds into that fourth bullet there is, we at, at USDA NIFA often get calls for programmatic data um, because people are wanting to know what is the network doing and what is the awardee doing when it comes to specific functions or tasks. As we know, disasters continue to, to happen, it seems at a, a, a more frequent rate, and therefore, right, there's a lot of interest in what the network is doing. And so having that information that's timely and, and meaningful really helps me share and lift up the, all the work that you are doing. Um, lastly, just wanted to share that we uh, uh, offered this award as a, con a continuation award. So it's not competed every year, as you as you may have been noted, um, but we provide this as a continuation basis. So it's based on the availability of funding, as well as that satisfactory performance of the project. And so we negotiate and work through that process about every summer because of the start date being September 1st, and, and we'll work through that. So that's all I've got on background and, and uh, kind of history of that fatty funding and hopefully kind of provide some context here as, you, as we move into hearing now from those project awardees and uh, them sharing more about what they've either done or will be doing. All right, thank you, Ashley, and thank you, Abby, for moving on to the next slide. Um, Thank you first to the executive committee and the committee chairs for their warm welcome and um, encouragement and engagement around our receiving of this award. award. And then thanks also to Abby and Amanda for taking me under their wing and helping me to understand how things have been done and where um, some of the pinch points are at and how we can move forward uh, together more proactively. So my name is Jason Weigel and um, I am the project manager for the Extension Foundation part of uh, the team that will be uh, supporting the Fatty Eden Grant over the next year. And I'm a co-project manager along with Mike and Jason Henderson um, and, and our colleague, Christina Sanders, who's also here uh, today in, in terms of uh, moving this grant forward and making sure that we continue to provide the support that the Eden Network needs. Next slide, please. So in this first part of the discussion, I'm going to talk about our overarching goals for the four years that we put into in for the Fatty Eden Grant. And then in a little bit later, um, in uh, towards the end of the presentation, we'll come back and talk about some of the work that's currently being done and that will be done over the next year as part of the Purdue section. And so real briefly, we, we propose three different things, supporting the strate Eden strategic 
plan and its structure and the continued growth and management of that plan towards achieving its goals. Uh, part of that is continuing to find ways to engage with and enhance the ability of the 1890s and 1994s to provide and, and continue to do good work in uh, both with Eden, but also with the disaster management education in their particular states. Um, <clears throat> in, in terms of expanding disaster management education, we will be continuing the process of the mini grants. Uh, and Mike and Christina especially will be working with the Eden Network to help to increase and expand uh, the availability and access to a variety of different tools and trainings and drills to help increase uh, awareness uh, within Extension, but then also to help support you in doing your roles. And then some of the um, things that we'll be tackling uh, in terms of um, the, the, the resources that the foundation brings to the table is around the, uh, a variety of new technology, new tools, new uh, structures that we can help bring to the uh, Eden system or the network in order to um, leverage those technologies and tools in a ways that maybe couldn't have been done in other ways. And so as an institution, the foundation has been doing a lot of work um, as, as a uh, membership-based foundation but as you may have seen in Bill Hoffman's uh, ECOP Monday Minute, we also, as a foundation, manage a portfolio of $56 million worth of grants to help support the extension system at large. And so there's a lot of tools and resources that uh, come along with that. And if any of you are familiar with NTAE or the Pesticide Safety Education Program, uh, New Technology for Ag Education, um, next gen uh, programs like that, Excite. These are all um, areas where we can bring the tools and technologies that were developed to help support those grant programs into the Eden network and and leverage those learnings to help expand all the good work that's already being done. And so that's really the overarching set of goals over the next four years. And as I mentioned, we'll come back in, in a few minutes and talk more about specifics. So next slide, please. So our core grant team, uh, you've already been introduced to a, a number of us, but um, you know, Mike Gaffney, as I mentioned, is, is a co-project manager and will be working a lot with, he's the content manager for the grant. And so he'll be working a lot with the technical side of things. And he and Christina will be focusing on the uh, education and emergency response and agri-security aspects of the work that we proposed. Jason Henderson, who couldn't be here today, uh, is our bridge member. Uh, he is our bridge to the previous historical side of, of Fatty Eden with Purdue. He's also a bridge to the ECOP program action teams, and in particular, the climate program action team. And he and Mike will also be serving as our ECOP liaisons, helping to bring uh, issues and needs to the broader ECOP system in order to help do that, along with uh, ECOP, the ECOP, Eden ECOP liaison um, it, as, as things move forward. And then the last person that uh, I haven't mentioned is Brenna Kotar. She's uh, the assistant project manager with the foundation, and she's going to help us all keep the I's dotted and the T's crossed and make sure that I get the reports and all the information that you saw in Ashley's slides to Ashley in time to make sure that things keep moving in a forward direction. Next slide, please. <clears throat> and so, as I mentioned, we do have a, a wide variety of tools and techniques that we can help bring. And this is our uh, what we're calling our wraparound services. And so uh, again, if you're familiar with NTAE or Excite or NextGen or Pesticide Safety Education Program, you'll recognize a lot of these folks and a lot of the tools that they can help bring to help support uh, the Eden net Network and the work that Eden is doing. And so while primarily they are um, written into the grant to support our core team in terms of delivering the grant. They're also available as resources to the broader extension or Eden system. So if as your committees are working or you're doing work and you have a question that you can't seem to find an answer for, or you need some uh, a disinterested third eye, please consider reaching out to them to help uh, support you and your work and just give you some, some ideas of maybe areas where that 
uh, things could potentially be improved. Next slide, please. And so this is my final slide for this section, or next to last slide for this section, sorry. And, you know, we can't, we are fatty Eden, we are not Eden, and we recognize that. And so we realize that you all are our core partners, and we can't do our work without you being able to do yours. And so we have expressed on numerous occasions to the executive committee and the committee chairs that we want to work with you, and we want to be your partners and collaborators in doing the work that you're doing. And so, um, you know, the, the resources and the concepts that we built into the proposal are really at this point, starting points for discussion and starting points for building things and continuing to build things because you all are doing a lot of great work and doing a lot of things out there. And so we want to continue the, to build on the work that Purdue has done and to continue to build on the work that you're doing to help expand the Eden name even further than it already is. And if you want, when I'm in Savannah at the uh, middle of next month, if you want to ask me what these pictures are from, I'll, I'll tell you some stories about how I spent three of my summers, uh, which each of these pictures represents. So I'm, I'm no stranger to emergency response. Uh, I'm no stranger to extension. Uh, I've, I've been on the responsible party side and I've done uh, had to do a lot of different things. So um, I understand the stresses and strains that you are all under as an educator, working with multiple counties and then trying to tackle something that comes down the unexpectedly, no pun intended, uh, in the middle of a night or in the middle of a day. So, um, you know, we really value the work that you all do and we want to help in any way that we can within the limits of our, our funding restraints with NIFA. Next slide, please. And I'll be uh, putting this information, actually, I guess we're sending this out, so I don't need to put it into chat, but this is the contact information for our core team. Uh, Mike's and Christina's information are in the Eden uh, directory. So uh, if you, you know, you, and as Monty said, or Tom said, um, probably these folks need no introduction whatsoever. You probably have them on speed dial. Uh, Jason Henderson's information, this is his new Iowa State information. So uh, that might be new for a lot of you. And then my information as well. Please don't hesitate to reach out, uh, either text me, email me. Uh, however, you can get a hold of me. Uh, happy to talk at any point. And then I'll be coming back in, uh, towards the end of the presentation again, as I mentioned, to talk about what's up next. So I believe with that, that is my last slide. And it's time to uh, for Amanda, I think, or Abby, one or the other. I think I go first. Uh, hello. Uh, let's see if I can multitask and change, change my own slides. So. All right, so first of all, on behalf of uh, the Fatty team at Purdue, we want to say a, a significant amount of thank you. So um, first and foremost to our Eden delegates, the entire delegation, that's, Eden wouldn't exist without each of you and the work and time that each of you commit. Um, this has never been a Purdue thing, it has always been a network thing. And so any successes that we have had has been solely based on the backs of our delegates and the work. And um, particularly um, just the value that each of you find in the network and in, in each other. Um, we also wanna thank the executive committee. They're kind of our ride or dies or, and our, uh, our wingmen for everything. Um, I'm pretty certain over several years, there have been certain executive teams that have maybe thought I was crazy or been ready for their time to end just to not have to be around us anymore. But everything, um, maybe it's kind of our sounding board. Um, all of our proposals that went in were um, and ideas and pieces that were funded. Everything was not a sounding board from exec and a lot of what we even used and always been um, just based on conversations that we got to be in the room for. So, and again, um, thank you to the standing and functioning committees, all of our committee chairs, all of those that serve on the committees. That's where the work's really done. Um, and thank you to our sub awardees, um, especially over this last few years throughout this term. Um, 
uh, finding specifically, um, we had over 16 different um, development grant sub -award awardees. Pardon me, I have a hiccup. Um, to which all developed outstanding products, um, toolkits, apps. Um, there were a variety of pieces. We spoke about them um, several times over the last few years. And um, it, it was really impressive to see what just a significant or what um, an investment into um, that development, development series the products that were able to come out of that and the audiences in which they've reached. Um, and of course, a huge thank you to USDA NIFA for giving us the opportunity um, to uh, be the, the, the guiding force for, and um, oversee these funds through all of the years. Um, as Tom referenced, Purdue w was in the room at the first meeting um, so we've been around with the group for 30 years, um, and we've been 20 years in overseeing the funds um, because we've always been in the room. It's always been our, our mission to make uh, the network not us, but for one of uh, a kind of an all for one idea. So again, thank you to USDA for entrusting us with that um, for so many years. Um, some of the pieces that we'll Still be continued to um, continue on on the Purdue side. That um, I'll let Amanda talk about the no cost extension sub awardees um, or the sub awards coming up. But um, kind of my last piece of business today um, will be after this presentation. I will ship off our report. And please don't think I actually did a spelling error. That really is the way that report name is written. Um, but that's the final report for this four-year cooperative agreement. It'll hit all the highlights of the things that we've done, the publications that have been released, um, and uh, all, all of our audiences we've reached, those kinds of things. So um, that's really my big last piece, and then I'm going to turn it over to Amanda now. Thanks, Abby. I appreciate it. So yes, one other piece that'll be coming out is the evaluation surveys. And those, there's three different evaluation surveys. They'll be going to delegates, executive committee, and subawardees. And what that evaluation survey is really just coming back for the Purdue team to reflect on our successes. Um, there's comments for each one of those that are slightly different to try to capture the wide range of effort that the Eden Network takes. And so we'll be using that um, kind of internally, and then we'll obviously share that out once we have um, all that data back. So if you do see that email, we would appreciate you getting that returned. Next slide. All right, so these are our 2023-2024 grant awardees. There's two slides. Um, so these really fit with the Eden strategic plan and those five critical focus areas. So each of these projects, some of them meet multiple critical focus areas, but all five are definitely represented. So please, um, if you know these colleagues, please um, share them out. Uh, we just listed PIs. There's obviously a lot more partnership and delegates um, listed on each of these projects, but um, we're looking forward to seeing these through for the next year. Next slide. So we have the five uh, mini grant awardees and then we continued our 1890 Advisory Council support and support for the 1994 engagement. So we still have all those pieces here and this is for this just next year. So next slide. These are the grants that were awarded. Each one of these projects had the sum of $20,000 for these projects. I will continue to be the contact and the support. This is through a no-cost extension of the our original 2018 FATI funds. So these are still managed on university with our business office. I will be the contact for these, um, and this will allow us a longer period of transition to continue to work with the Extension Foundation and Jason's great team um, to make sure we have a really uh, positive transition to the new fatty team. Next slide. 
And just a few more comments on that. So um, actually the Extension Foundation kind of is subcontracted with us for some of this 2013 mini grant support as we had tried to work on some projects. So we have some transitions that I'm going to let Jason talk about here um, as he can update how his team has already begun working on some of these. Great. Thanks, Amanda. So uh, prior to NIFA, uh, I think even releasing the RFA for Fatty Eden, uh, we had entered into a contract, a subcontract with Purdue to help, as Amanda said, help them finish out their uh, Fatty NCE year. And so over the past um, few months, uh, various things have been occurring, but really over the past month, things have really kind of taken off. So um so in terms of the website right now, we're working with Purdue to move uh, the the existing version that's on the web right now into a sandbox on our side. And both both systems are using WordPress. So it's just a matter of uh, working through Purdue's IT requirements to make sure that everything is lined up and then we can get it transferred over. So our goal is to, once we get a copy of it into our onto our side, to work with the communications team with Cheyenne uh, Guideman, I think I believe her last name was, uh, to uh, incorporate some of the uh, low hanging fruit changes and updates and and uh, tweaks to make the the website function a little more uh, effectively. Take care of some of the hiccups that we all occasionally experience using it, and then put it up on uh, put it up on the web, and then. Uh, have the uh, URL, the do domain name transferred from Purdue to us. And then at that point, uh, it, it the website and its content will be managed on our side. So uh, our hope is that that will be 100% seamless and nobody will know anything other than we, when we say, hey, it's live, but uh, things happen. So, but we are currently working on that. On Tuesday, I believe it was, if not, I forget when it was, it seems like Tuesday, uh, the the August newsletter went out, and that was the first of this collaboration between Purdue and and the foundation on moving the newsletter into HubSpot, which is uh, the foundation's uh, CRM, uh, customer relationship management software. And there's a couple reasons why uh, we we felt it appropriate to do that. One is that uh, the CRM allows us to connect the uh, email news list to online signups and uh, uh, allows you to manage your own uh, subscription pre preferences. So if you don't want to receive it anymore, you can turn it off. If you only want to receive it and nothing else from the Extension Foundation, you can do that. Uh, it gives you the ability to manage your newsletter preferences the way you want. But more importantly, it allows us to be able to um, put some of the uh, um, delegate registration uh, forms online. So it automatically feeds into not only the newsletter, but then also into uh, committee lists, uh, other lists that that the um, that the Eden network uses. And so it, it's just a clean and simple integration across multiple different forms and multiple different aspects of the website that uh, you can uh, sign up for and manage uh, as a committee chair, as an, uh, as a board member, et cetera, to do that. So uh, again, that was uh, uh, Tuesday, I believe. And I do know that there were some uh, folks who, who didn't for a variety of reasons get those newsletters. So we're working on cleaning those emails up and making sure that those folks get a copy. But that said, there is a copy of the August newsletter on the Eden website at the moment in the news section. So we've been uh, working with uh, Purdue and with Chris Heine to get her animal biosecurity course updated. Uh, Deb Weitzenkamp and I met with Chris this morning, and they are working right now, apparently, on getting that uh, upgraded and updated and uh, should be rolled out here in the next day or two. Uh, to have that on there. And so one of our goals is to take the Eden related and emergency response related um, uh, courses that are in campus right now and make them a little more uh, visible and accessible as an Eden related type of, of educational program. And so there's that opportunity as well as a number of opportunities to put more 
and various types of curricula online and resources online to help folks uh, manage those resources and, and help uh, manage enrollment in those resources going forward. And then, as I mentioned in my uh, previous part, we're, we've been working a lot with the executive committee and the various committee chairs on a variety of things uh, related to the work that they are doing in that particular group or committee. And that's something that um, Tom and Monty and Angie, you're probably going to get about a half dozen emails from me tomorrow when I'm officially in the seat uh, with a variety, a variety of questions on uh, things going forward. So um, so that's really in a nutshell what we've been doing in terms of helping to support the FATI uh, NCE. And so a lot of that is um, parallel, but interrelated to the work that we're going to be doing under the FATI Eden grant. And so I wanted to spend a little time talking about the transition and what you can expect, and then as well as some of the projects that we are going to be uh, engaging in, and not projects, but things we're going to be engaging in over the next couple of months. So my goal, and I think our, our committee's goal, as I mentioned, one is to be highly engaged and highly collaborative, but then also to try to make this as painless and transparent as possible. And by transparent, no major road or you know, no major problems, no major website outages, no loss of resources. And so that's one of the things that we're really striving to work forwards and work to is, is to minimize that impact as we do make this transition. Um, so I'm going to quickly, Mike, if you're ready, and Christina, I'd like for you to talk a little bit about the work that you're planning on doing underneath the grant in terms of engagement, continuing the engagement that you already are doing within uh, Eden, but then also some of the things that you're looking at doing going forward. I can start us out. Uh, thanks, Jason. I appreciate that. Um, so first, um, my thanks to uh, USDA for making all this happen and for Purdue to getting us to the point where we are now. Uh, that's deserving of way more recognition than just a few sentences from me or the rest of us can, can really capture it. So thank you. Um, we think there there are significant opportunities to uh, to build on what has already uh, been done and move us. And you'll see, I think I, I I typed an answer to a question. I'm not sure whether it went to everybody or not, but I used the term, and it's my term, Eden 3.0. Uh, right? We've got a, a new strategic plan. We've got really the third iteration of structure for Eden. Uh, the original, um, the original arrangement between USDA and Purdue, the the cooperative agreement that is now in transition between USDA and Purdue, and then this current cooperative agreement between USDA and the Extension Foundation. Uh, not not only that uh, funding structure, but um, structure of the of the network as a whole really is in transition, uh, beginning now, and. Um, Christina and Jason and I have had a couple of conversations and we'll have more uh, with the executive committee. I, I wanna start really by saying that everything we do will be a collaborative approach. This will not be um, the Extension Foundation led team doing things for Eden uh, or even with Eden. It will be us working as part of Eden collaboratively with the executive committee to accomplish any changes that uh, that, that need to be made. But we think, uh, and we'll propose to the executive committee that there's opportunity to, to bring uh, more volume, more structure and, um, and more process to bear on um, establishing a um, bigger library, if you will, of resources available uh, at a number of levels, again, building on the good work that has already been done. But um, those resources would uh, include um, materials that could be used either directly by extension professionals in dealing with their communities uh, or made available by the communities, uh, by use, so, sorry, for use by the communities themselves, right? We've got a couple of, of, of levels of aggregation there. 
Um, and we, I, I think we can pay more attention to that and we might have two levels of access ultimately, but that's not my decision to make. It's simply something that I'll bring to the conversation for discussion. Um, I think there's also opportunity, not just in enhancing the availability of resources, whether that's packaged uh, exercises as have been talked about at the exercise committee meetings, uh, or just-in-time resources that can be downloaded by a, a, a county extension professional for use if something comes up at the county level, uh, but also some opportunity to, to bring some um, additional structure to the process of, uh, sorry, <laughs> to the process of um, sharing resources. Right? We've, got a, we've got a great informal system in place right now, um, uh, Angie Lindsay knows that if things go more south than they already have in Florida, she can reach out to the Eden Network and um, and link to resources, not uh, Eden resources per se, but East resources that are available because of the Eden connections. And Christina and I really want to work in earnest on uh, uh, formalizing a process for for broadening the reach. Uh, and the availability to access resources that are represented by the Eden member institutions and can be made more broadly available to participating institutions because of the Eden network. And uh, again, that's a first offer uh, that we will uh, have conversations about as we move forward, but uh, that's some of our thinking. Um, we, we've had what we think might be some bright ideas about how to better engage um, Again, building on existing efforts, uh, particularly with uh, our 1890 and 1994 institutions. Christine has made some significant headway on that already in the last couple of years. She and I, in anticipation of tomorrow, have already begun some activity with other entities that uh, we think will be uh, a separate uh, and uh, perhaps useful leverage point of entry to working with 1994 institutions. Um, indirect access is one way to, to in, increase participation, whether it's through sponsoring tribes, uh, such as the Lummi tribe here in Washington that is the host tribe for the Northwest Indian College, our 1994 institution, or the National Tribal Emergency Management Council, which is a multi-tribal entity that again engages 1994. So we're, we're actively working on a number of initiatives, um, really at an introductory uh, uh, point right now because we're not officially on the clock yet. We've got what, about uh, 16 hours left, and uh, and because we have not had the opportunity to to have the sort of working session that we think we need to have with the executive committee, so that we know that we are doing uh, these things, that we are making these decisions and pursuing these initiatives collaboratively rather than working separately. Uh, Christina, you want to talk a little bit about 1890s? Sure. Yes, thank you. So um, for any of you who don't know me, Christina Sanders, Washington State University. Um, I'm mindful of the time, but I just wanted to touch on a couple of things really quickly. Yes, to what Jason and Mike said about working collaboratively with the executive committee. I'm really um, kind of excited about that, having served in a few different capacities with Eden uh, over the years. Um, I've been part of the uh, Eden 1890s advisory group since about 2000, 2017 um, and have been pretty active with them. They started in 2015 with, I think, three 1890s on board and are now up to 15 of the 19 that exist. So lots of success there. Uh, they've also been interested, you know, had an interest in bringing more 1990 or bringing 1994s on board. So I'm looking forward to working with you all with the 1890s group and um, with Michael Wilcox to kind of strategize on how we bring more 1994s on board. Um, it, did I forget anything, Mike? Oh, the Primer Conference. So the Primer Conference um, that was held in Texas this last spring will be happening again in Texas this coming spring. They've already started working on not only um, supporting the 1890s that have come on board, it, but uh, you know, working to bring on those last few. And this last one, they worked very closely with local tribes and kind of planned a big part of the conference around that culture of preparedness and including different cultures. 
two more quick things. Um, I want to recognize that the the new collaborative partnership uh, is going to be represented by Jason Weigel and Monty Dozier, among others, quite a crowd actually, that is going to the Falcon Conference, First American Land Grant Consortium, which is a direct point of entry to work with 1994s. That happens in October, gentlemen. Um, and um, and recognize that we've had an invitation from the National Tribal Emergency Management Council to bring Eden to that table, and that, that will be an, an indirect point of entry to work with the 1994s in a, in a much more um, direct way. So thanks for that. I believe that is everything for our section. So Tom, I guess I'm turning it back over to you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Mike, uh, Christina, Abby, uh, Ashley, and Amanda uh, for your input into the session. Uh, I would be remiss if I did not say at this moment, uh, if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, if you would type them into the chat, uh, Dr. Dozier is monitoring that and will provide us with that input. So, uh, we can uh, advance uh, your ideas, uh, your questions. Uh, having heard uh, everyone's presentation today, I hope you understand uh, that I have heard uh, happily those words of communication and cooperation and collaboration uh, by every speaker. Uh, we are anxious to be equal partners in that effort. Uh, the speaking on behalf of the officers, uh, I can tell you that all of those uh, collaboration and cooperation uh, uh, designs are a part of our plan. Uh, we have as our guiding light a laser focus on the strategic plan that was developed years ago uh, or two years ago and implemented and uh, passed by the uh, membership of the uh, network at the uh, business meeting in uh, Grand Rapids. So that is our guiding light and we will be uh, part and parcel of implementing that. Uh, through continuation of those things that have always been valuable to Eden. We're going to do those things with the leadership that uh, the points of contact, the executive committee members, the chairs, the vice chairs, uh, those delegates that have special talents and are subject matter experts in those fields will continue to guide and lead and uh, help us be stronger uh, members of our academic communities in our land grant institutions and in the communities uh, and the uh, states that we provide service. Uh, it is Eden's desire to be that nationally recognized resource. So we thank you for that, but we want everyone to know that what has gone on before is still uppermost and a prime consideration. The path that has been carved out of the wilderness by those many people, some on this very call, but have been carved out by so many people that are proudly members and alumni of and uh, founding fathers and, and mothers of Eden. So we are not changing this. We are not transitioning this. We are not leaving what made Eden special. We're building upon those foundational blocks that have been put in place. And for that, we thank each of you. If there are any questions, we certainly will take them now, Dr. Dr. Dozier, I do not believe we have received any. Is that correct? There is one in the chat that I said I would answer live. All right. So the question had to do with um, HSPD 9 and NSM 16 and the specific phrase enhancing preparedness and resilience of the food and agriculture sector. 
So this will probably be a la more layered than I think we have time for, but I can tell you that both NIFA and Eden are connected with the um, uh, USDA Homeland Security's Food and Agriculture uh, Sector Governing Council, um, which meets regularly. Um, Tommy Bass is Eden's representative on that. Um, and this is, I think, an opportunity where we have extension at the table formally, USDA NIFA at the table formally, to be engaged within those conversations regarding private industry or that, that commercial sector, as well as then what's happening across the government and our government partners. Um, and so there are regular meetings. Um, where we often discuss critical issues, uh, for example, cybersecurity has been addressed a lot lately, but then there's also uh, learning involved in that as well. So, um, you know, specifically, Glenda, we may just have to have an off-side conversation regarding specifically failing consumer sciences, but I can tell you from a broad perspective, there has been engagement and there currently is and will be engagement in this Again, as I've said before, communication, situational awareness is so important, and I'm just thrilled that Eden now has an official representative tagged into the govern uh, the coordinating council, um, so we can continue to explore those linkages and and make those important connections. We are strong because we have strong representation on various councils and governing bodies throughout. We are lengthening the shadow of Eden in no small part because of Dr. Mueller's input and uh, opening windows and doors for us to go through. But we have great plans and we have subject matter leads in Eden. We have task forces that are attacking problems. We have committees and those sub-grant awardees that Amanda described earlier they are part and parcel of us reaching all of our objectives and following that strategic plan and always being mentioned, hopefully, in food system security, in cybersecurity for small producers and growers and ranchers and those rural communities that are without and underrepresented. So we're doing all of those things. It's we're we're individually focused, but together we are a conglomerate that are that it's attacking problems that exist uh, for all of our uh, stakeholders, clients, and citizens. Well, I appreciate your attentive uh, participation. I appreciate your involvement. I thank you for everything that you do daily and that you have done historically for Eden. I look forward and all of the officers and executive committee looks forward to this new chapter, this new part of our history. But I assure you that we are always cognizant, always thankful for the memories, for the efforts, for the involvement of those at Purdue that have made Eden what it is today. And I would like to say thank you to all of you. Abby, Amanda, and historically Claire, and Cheyenne, and all I can call names, but I won't. But even back to the base days of Steve uh, and carrying Eden around in his hip pocket. Uh, so thank you all, Purdue. Thank you for everything that you have always done. Abby, best wishes to you in your new chapter of life. Thanks for everything. Philip, thank you, and we appreciate it. Sure thing. Uh, thank you so much, Tom. And so at this time, I think we can go ahead and conclude the webinar. Um, you'll be receiving an email with the uh, link to the recording, and we'll also have a link to the resources as well for that. So um, thank you so much, and uh, we will go ahead and conclude. Enjoy the rest of your day.